Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests to give us great information and insight into the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage four cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. That can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. You can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. On today's episode, we're going to dive deep into life and a hope revealed moment through the life of a very special guest. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Hey, my name is Ben Azadi. I'm a certified functional health practitioner, best-selling author of three books, and I'm on a mission to educate one billion people on planet Earth. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I am super stoked today to have my friend Ben on the show with us, and he is a superstar. You might know him. He hangs out with a lot of folks that uh, he loves beef and fast food, and uh, he's really into fats and sugars from what I understand. Is that not right, Ben? I don't know if that's accurate, my friend. Oh, well, maybe it's the wrong show. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> that's right. The, the wrong keto. profile. <laughs> and that's all together wrong. Keto, right? So this big thing, keto, has been out uh, for a while here, lady, but it's gotten quite, quite popular the past couple of years. People have been talking about it, and um, I have a little bit of an understanding of it. Some of my friends have gone through it. I know what you do, and uh, to a degree. I mean, I don't, I'm not a keto, keto guy myself, but uh, I guess you get to eat, like, lots of beef and stuff, and... I mean, how's that work? What's what? Let's tell us what keto is all about and what you do. And before we get there, forget that. I mean, so like you're in Miami, right? Yeah, beautiful, sunny South Florida in Miami. I know, but you, uh, I know you just moved down there not too long ago. Well, I moved to this part of Miami not too long ago, but I'm born and raised in Miami. In Miami? Yeah, I'm a oh local. <laughs> you can't get away from it, can you? I love it here. It's free. You were here uh, about a year ago. I remember it's yeah, spectacular, yeah. dude. It's, it's incredible. I love it here. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, I don't know why you'd want to go anywhere else. It's just beautiful down there. It gets yeah, it's muggy. Good. It's kind of, kind of thick down there sometimes with the, with the weather. But other than that, it's pretty decent. It depends. If you're somebody who doesn't mind the heat and you prefer the heat over the cold, then it's the perfect place for you. And I'm one of those people. So I, I like the heat. I'll sweat it out any day. Oh, no doubt. Except for like, there's, I don't know, there's like 75% of the people there, they're like 90 plus years old, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a lot of retired people. There's a lot of retired people. In, love not, not so much in Miami, but in South Florida. Yeah. So if you go like up to Boca and West Palm and those areas, yeah, you, you know all about that. <laughs> yeah, I do. My grandma lived there and my aunt lives there. And, you know, exactly. Anyway, there. Yeah. <laughs> I know how it all goes there. So, so, so Ben, I mean, are you married? Not married. I'm uh, with my girlfriend for a little over four years. And you guys are planning on getting married sometime in your future, huh? Yeah, marriage is definitely a plan in the future. Yeah. Well, have you proposed to her yet? Have not proposed yet. So should <laughs> but, I put the heat on now? Is this what is this time <laughs> for me to do that? Or <laughs> there's no heat. You're not the only person asking me, but oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's in the future for sure. I w- I do want to get married. I do want to have uh, a family. So. Uh, right now, we we took the first step earlier this year, and we moved in together uh, about six months now. So that's yeah. the first step in the, the into the next step. And she's a Miami gal as well, or she's from somewhere else. She's from Brazil. She was born in Brazil. She was raised in in uh, in the U.S., but um, she's not born in Miami like myself. She's her, her entire family is in Brazil. Wow. So how did you guys meet? We went through a mutual friend. Uh, my best friend used to work with her at, at their company that they used to work at, at Latam Airlines. And she, they were, my best friend was telling me about her and telling her about me. And she set us up on a date. And we hit it off about f- over four years ago. And wow. we just kept dating. And then we became a, an official couple. It must be hard to meet somebody like that. Because then you're like a, like a Brazilian of those women over there. There's a Brazilian Brazilians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I'm pretty bad. It's old dad jokes. I'm bad with dad jokes. <laughs> so it's crazy. Oh, total dad joke right there. Oh, it's a dad joke. It's a dad joke. It's a bad dad joke, too. 
So, man, you are you're into the whole uh, the whole health scene, and I have a lot of respect for a guy fighting cancer myself. I understand the value of of the right type of foods, the right type of uh, uh, benefit of understanding what it can do for your body in right ways. And uh, I mean, too much of anything is not a good thing either. I know some folks that have gone off the deep end on some diets, and it actually was harmful to their bodies. And yep. balance in everything, um, but. Um, You've been at this for a little while, and you've done pretty good at it. You've uh, actually, past couple of years, you've written three books. Mm-hmm. Tell That's us about right. that. Tell me about the books. What's up with that? Yeah, so three books have gone out. Uh, they're all on Amazon right now. The first one is just about general health. If you, if you, It's a very easy read. If you have no idea where to start, then that would be a good book for you. It's called The Perfect Health Booklet, and it's just nine chapters designed to teach you how to achieve perfect health. And th- my definition of perfect health is living the way that you were designed to live, the way God intended for you to live. So God designed us to thrive, not to survive, not to deal with with issues. So just getting back to functioning normal is my definition of perfect health. So I just, in nine chapters, break it all down. What I do is I curate a lot of the research and work and experience that I put into the health space the last 11 years, and I curate it chapter by chapter, in nine, in nine chapters within this book. So it's a very easy read. That, that's the first book. And then I have a book about sleep and a book about intermittent fasting, and they're all on Amazon. Oh, that's awesome. We hit all, all of them right at the, the nail on the head, as they would say. But uh, a friend of mine, his name's uh, Ayamir. He's on LinkedIn here, and he, uh, he did a thing on fasting here in the past. Uh, well, this year, actually, he did. And there's some great value to fasting. I'm a Christian, and there's a, a great uh, resource as far as fasting. The Bible talks about it clearly. Um, it doesn't necessarily talk about the health benefits of it, but there's a reason why it's always there, I reckon, and now I know why. But uh, there is great benefit to fasting properly. Uh, some folks, uh, you know, it's not like binge dieting or anything like that. Again, everything has balance, and you can do it too much or too little. Hey, there's a pooch right behind you. <laughs> yeah, you saw him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's walking around. He wants to be a part of this interview. <laughs> That's awesome. What's the dog's name? Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. I know you would appreciate that name. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm a musician. so I, Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the whole Ziggy world. So anyway, you've, there's, a, there's some great benefits to, to fasting um, for our body. It really helps bring in some balance uh, that we're in need of. And uh, you brought up the, the thought process originally about um, the way God intended us to have health in our body. And that was where your first book came from, was about that balance of health, uh, yeah. and, which is... Uh, which is important, obviously. And there's so many different opinions out there, uh, Ben, about diets and health. And good grief, if, if anybody would tell me enough about another cure for cancer, I don't know what I would do. I'd probably blow up. But um, there's a bazillion ideas out there. Um, some of them are great. Some of them not so great. I mean, what in the world got you turned on to keto over all the other bazillion, Brazilian things that are out there? I yeah, you're right. There's so much information enough to feel like so you're much. getting your your face blown off with the freaking fire hose, right? Yes. You go on Dr. Google and you search for something, you're gonna see Dude, it's insane, right? I mean, can, can you just bring it down to earth for us and just say, Whoa, come on. Totally, 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 totally. And I and I to- I resonate with that because it can be very discouraging for somebody who really wants to be healthy and they go on Google. And they type in, what is the keto diet or what is the best diet or whatever it is they're searching for. And they get all of these resources from credible authorities saying you should do it this way. And then right below it from credible authorities saying you should do it the complete opposite way. (laughs) And that person is just paralyzed like, uh, I don't get it. What do I do? I'm just going to continue doing what I've been doing and they don't get healthy. Uh, so for me, I, I've been in the space for 11 years now and it all, it all stemmed from my transformation and I'll, I'll share about that. But when I got into the health space, I was one of those people who was conflicted as well. I tried many different diets, many different approaches. So I did a trial and error type of approach. I, I've been the guinea pig for myself and for, now, for my clients and my future clients. And also, I've dug into the research. So where I'm coming from is 11 years in the space, studying about three hours on average every single day for 11 years is probably my average. I'm a, just, I, I love to read. I love to study. I love to experiment. And I don't say that to, to impress, but I say it to impress upon people that I put in thousands and thousands of hours in research and a lot of money and courses and mentorship to get to where I am now. 
And I've come to realize that out of all the things I've experimented with after studying human physiology, the body is designed to burn fat as the primary fuel source. With that being said, Matt, it doesn't mean that should be the only fuel source. So I love keto, Mm -hmm. but I don't teach keto the same way anybody else teaches keto because there's no cookie cutter approach to keto. I teach it in a way to reset somebody's hormones, reset their metabolism, bring down inflammation, teach the body to burn fat for fuel, teach the 70 trillion cells we have to choose fat for fuel, and then you start flexing in and out of keto the right way. So I think keto is great. I I just don't think it's healthy long term. So you you got to do it in a way that makes sense. And that's where I stand on this day. It might change in five years, but based off of the last 11 years and this day, that's the way I see it. No, that sounds great. I I concur. I felt the same. I'm glad we feel the same way. Uh, It makes for an easier show. But uh, (laughs) I've I've, I've seen it in other people's lives and the way that uh, the way it happens. And I've seen people uh, hit highs and lows with keto. And um, they're not they're not pleasant, and it's like you have to really torture yourself in a couple of different ways. If you're not uh, if you're not well, one if you don't have somebody like you to help guide them, because uh, I don't think a, just a book's going to be enough. Because sometimes you're not going to. I mean, which book do you get? You know, the, of, right. a, of a thousand books, and and there's a lot of opinions. I mean, you're you're an opinion. There's no doubt. Uh, but I think you're a sound opinion. And if anybody watches you or sees any of your stuff, I mean, you're on Facebook and you're on LinkedIn and uh, you offer some video content. We're both content creators, different type of content, but we both create. And you are, um, you know, you knock it out of the park every time. You know what you're talking about. Um, you have your stuff together. And uh, that obviously comes from the books that you're reading, a stack of them behind you there as well. And, uh, you know, you care about it. I think that's what the difference is. It's, it's important to you. Um, I think it's important because you've seen it make a difference in other people's lives. I mean, just off the top of my head here for a question, how about this one is, is there a, a, somebody in your life that you've had as a client or something like that in the past few years, you thought like, man, this is like, this is an amazing story about this particular person. Yeah, there's several. Uh, the, the one that comes to mind is, uh, a woman who came to me who had type 2 diabetes, which is a, a lifestyle disease that is unfortunately treated with, with medication, huge mismatch there. Uh, and, and she's gone on the American Diabetes Association website. And if you go on there as somebody who has been diagnosed with diabetes, and I'm talking about type 2 diabetes, it's going to say that, hey, it's a progressive and chronic disease. There is no curing it. There's no reversing it. We could manage it and, and you could live a, 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 you know, a healthy life, a quality of life, but you're always going to have this disease is what they're going to say. And they're going to give you a diet that actually causes the disease, by the way. So she saw that and uh, she came to me and within 60 days, we reversed her type 2 diabetes. We dropped her A1C out of the type 2 diabetic range to the healthy range and she's gotten her inflammation down, her joint pain down. So it's things like that. That happened over time, several days. several times, 60 days, dude, when you follow a healthy keto, healthy fasting approach. And it, it was just like that. You know, She could have gone years and years and years on medication, on that medical treadmill, but she took action with this information and, and it changed her life. Wow. Well, it's, <laughs> I hate to say this, but, you know, even when it comes down to cancer, it's like, you know, there's, there's no, uh, there's no benefit in curing cancer when the money is in keeping you sick. So uh, now for those that are listening today, they're in oncology that are passionate about curing the disease. I'm not talking about you, but I am talking about some of the industry out there that would just love for us in America to say stupid, fat, dumb, and diseased. Yeah, it's a sad truth. There's a lot of good doctors out there, so we're not talking about everybody, but there's a lot of money to be made for people being sick. Not not to kill people, but to, for them to be sick for a very long yeah, time. You want to kill them because then you can't make any more money. <laughs> but exactly. if you keep them sick enough, yeah. then yeah, there's a, there's a big, big profit center there. Totally. And within 60 days, you're able to take this gal from type two to nothing and uh, some doctor would be like, oh, wait a minute, there must be something wrong, or you, you shouldn't talk to that guy. Or, you know, but oh, some yeah. doctors, they're pretty happy about it at the same time. But uh, did she have, she was under medical care, obviously. What happened between her and her doctors that period of time? Were they blown away and excited? Or, Well, she told me that her cardiologist 
was was uh, just thought of it as a miracle, and he, he and he wanted to actually speak with me. Like he wanted to learn a little bit of what I did with her. <laughs> he never took her up on that, or he he never reached out to me. But I gave my information, and she said that he was really pleased with the results she had from her. <laughs> I'm sure uh, he cardiologist. Was. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of the times you're just going to chalk it up as a you know very uncommon. It's a miracle. You know this is not typical type of thing. And uh, yet, yeah, it's it's a, but this is not necessarily a miracle. It's miraculous. But it's not necessarily a miracle in the sense that what you're doing is smart. There's things that you're doing that have been around for a very, very long time. Uh, God's no dummy, so he creates certain things for us to do. Uh, not to mention that um, Lord knows there's plenty of crap we put in our bodies that, that puts us in the positions we're in. I'm guilty uh, as charged. Tell me a little bit about that. So, um, you know. There's no doubt, folks that are listening and watching today, we all know that um, most of us, what we eat or drink, that's not good for us. And, um, you know, everything within moderation, I've always uh, taught and and think that's a, a wise word. Um, but let's just get serious. There's a lot of times we don't need to be pulling through the drive through At the same time, you know, there's not too many um, keto expresses as you drive down the road to, to whip up into the drive through and grab something real fast on your way to do whatever. It's, it's very convenient, very easy to get something at, at the drive through um, It's cheap um, because it's expensive to eat healthy. Um, even if you got to, there are a couple places around the country that's, that cater to, uh, to, to green foods, good foods, you can drive through and get some stuff. But you know, it's a lot more expensive. So give me some ideas there. I mean, what are some things that we could do in our lives that, um, that would be easier? I mean, it takes a lot of effort to do things right. I mean, it's a, it's a lifestyle change, a lot of things there, but, but what are some ways that you can kind of maybe coast into something like that? And maybe so it's not so hard for people to think, oh, I can't just do a keto diet. I mean, how can you ease into something like that? Yeah, it's a good question. Cause a lot of people are, they're going to get little bit discouraged with uh, all the changes they need to make. So the way I structure it is a week by week approach, a day by day approach, just making some small tweaks here and there, gradually decreasing the carbohydrates in your diet, including the grains and the processed carbs and all the junk, just gradually decreasing that while you gradually increase healthy fats and protein. And I give people a list of healthy fats and protein. Let's make your plate have more of this and less of this. And let's do that the first week and let's stop snacking in between meals. Let's have just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So they have a successful seven days. Okay, let's build from that. Now I want you to drop the carbs even further and eat more of these foods and add these green leafy vegetables. And they do that for another seven days and then you build from that. So the goal is to just beat yesterday, beat the week before, the month before, the year before, just small increases each day. It's that small discipline action compounded over time that really makes a big difference for for people so the way i teach keto is not to just go cold turkey uh and jump right in because you're going to get a lot of detox symptoms you're going to get a lot of these carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms which people call the keto flu but it's really a carbohydrate withdrawal fluid a symptom so if you just ease into it the right way and follow the structure then it makes it long lasting so that's what i would recommend Mm, that's fantastic. So what is keto? I mean, what's the word keto mean? Does it stand for something? Is keto one word? I mean, what's keto? Yeah, it stands for ketogenesis, which is the creation, the, the birth of ketones. So what makes keto different than any other diet out there or in the history of this, this world with diets, keto is not necessarily a diet. Although you eat keto-friendly foods, it's not necessarily a diet. It's a metabolic process. That's why it's going to be here forever. It's not just a diet. It's what happens when, you, when the carbs are low enough in the body, then the brain is running out of glucose for fuel. That's a good thing because then it's going to switch over to ketones. It signals to the liver to produce these ketones, ketogenesis. By the way, folks, you recently spoke on this not too long ago on LinkedIn, if I remember correctly. So Yeah, totally. Yeah. I go back a few weeks and you can check it out. So. It's all on my LinkedIn, uh, Ben so Azadi cool. on LinkedIn. Uh, so w- when your liver produces ketones, then your brain is now getting ketones for fuel, which gives the brain three times more energy than glucose. So that's what keto is. It's a ketone body, which is that actual molecule that's feeding the body, feeding the brain. And it's a metabolic process, not necessarily a diet. It's not necessarily 
something that you have to eat a whole bunch of meat for. Like you said, it's about bringing your carbohydrates low enough to get into ketosis. Wow. So carbohydrates, carbohydrates low enough, meaning, yeah, you know, breads, uh, rice, sugars, whites, basically, right? Some of that. And then um, what else would you think of for carbohydrates? I mean, everybody takes it for granted, but let's just say we're, we're dumb here coming into this thing not knowing. So what, what are some of the things we cut out, uh, reduce? Yeah, good question. A lot of people ask me if this is a carb or that is a carb because people are they're just not aware. And it, that's totally fine. I, I've been there myself. Definitely the, 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 the rice and the bread and the whole wheat bread as well. People, a lot of people believe they're under the, the, they're under the false assumption that wheat bread is healthy for them. When in reality, two slices of wheat bread spike your blood sugar as much as a Snickers bar or a 12 ounce can of soda. Wow. So blood sugar will be spiked up from wheat bread the same way it would from a Snickers bar. So I'm talking about whole grains as well. I'm talking about fruit, at least short term to bring your, your carbs low enough just to get into ketosis. The goal is to be very strict short term, put in the discipline, short term pain for long term gain. Once you get into ketosis, you reset the metabolism, you reset any insulin resistance you might have, then you could start incorporating the carbs back or the healthy carbs back in. But you got to get to that point where you earn that badge. So I would avoid fruit uh, or, or I should say a limit, gradually start to decrease the fruit. The, the breads, the pastas, the grains, the cereals, the oatmeal, all that. Honey. Um, okay, anything. wait a minute. What can I eat? Water? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really – you just got to know what to eat. So you have a whole bunch of non-starchy vegetables, so green leafy vegetables, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. You could have wild-caught fish, eggs. You could have uh, organic grass-fed cheeses. You could have nuts and seeds, uh, healthy oils grass-fed beef, uh, chicken, uh, poultry, lamb. You can have a lot of things. Just got to know what to eat. No, that sounds good. Sounds right? real good because I'm hungry right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All that's good. It's, it's Dude, delicious. it's something else. So, I mean, what turns you on to keto? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things out there. Um, I mean, you were like, you were into uh, figuring out what kind of a, you wanted to go on a diet one day or something. I mean, you look pretty good right now. So, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to be a skinny little guy. I mean, why would you want to go on a diet or keto? Yeah, well, I, I don't do keto for um, weight loss purposes. I do it for the way it makes me feel. I do it for the uh, longevity genes that are turned on. So, I do it just for, my, for the health benefits. How I got into keto was about six years ago when I was following a vegan diet. I was actually a vegan for a year and a half. Uh, wow. Speaking of speaking of diets, <laughs> so first five months was great. I had a lot of benefits from it, but I, I learned something from that experience because I put myself in a box, which a lot of people become dogmatic about their approach. And anytime you define yourself through a diet or through some sort of trend or whatever you want to call it, you're in trouble. And I did that myself when I was vegan six years ago. So my health after the fifth month of being vegan started to decline each month as I've been there and I started to actually study like, is this the right approach? Uh, and I did the lab work. It confirmed that my hormones were wonky and I was not as healthy as I wanted to be. So I decided to get off the vegan diet and, and try keto for a bit, try a healthy, high fat, low carb diet and do some lab work and also see how I feel. Five months into it, uh, dramatic change. Uh, my workouts were better. My energy levels were better. And I kept testing my blood work and I kept um, ch seeing how I was, I was feeling and I, and I stuck with it. So now I do more of like a, I call it keto flexing where maybe 85% of the time, like I, flexing, like <laughs> not that type of flexing. I know you just <laughs> wanted to show your muscles, Matt. <laughs> what? <laughs> flexing in and out of keto. Oh, that kind of flex. I Flexibility. Oh um, yeah. So now I'm probably 85% of the time I'm in ketosis and then 15, 20% of the time I'm not in ketosis. And that's what works for me. Wow. That's pretty amazing. So I guess, again, back to the whole thing for you, it was like you said you're, you're monitoring your blood, you're looking for your health. I mean, that's a lot of thought process there. I mean, I'm there because I'm, I'm dealing with terminal disease and there's things that I have to look for. But, you know, before that, I didn't really care that much about that kind of stuff. I just kind of did whatever. And I knew that uh, I should eat better and do better and exercise better. But for the most part, I didn't. Uh, uh, it hit me in the, right between the eyes later on. But, I mean, what drove you to that place? What, what made you so conscious of your health and your, I mean, did you grow up in a, a medical 
family or did you, I mean, what was that for you? What got you to that place in your life? Yeah, complete opposite of a medical family. Uh, my parents immigrated to the U.S. from Iran back in the 1970s. Oh, wow. So my mom, she, back then. yeah, she, my, my mom worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> as an assistant manager I was, as I was a kid for, for 20 years she worked there. Wow. And she would do the best she can with what she had. And she would bring me Kentucky Fried Chicken every night. <laughs> so I would feast every on that. Night. You Pretty grew up on night. KFC. I grew up on KFC. My mom was working all the time. My parents got divorced. So I was alone a lot. And I hung out with the wrong crowd going up. I was obese as a kid. Uh, I weighed um, a lot more than I do now. I was obese. I was addicted to drugs, uh, video games, hanging around with the wrong people. That was my life. And, and, and I, that went into my adulthood. And it was tw when I was 24 years old, which was back in 2008, uh, that's when I hit rock bottom, Matt, when I, I weighed 250 pounds. I was depressed. My ex-girlfriend had broken up with me. I was afraid to be in a, in a room by myself because I would have suicidal thoughts. Mm. I, I wanted to end my life because I was just so tired of, of being in pain. Every waking minute I was uh, alive, I felt in pain and I, I wanted to end the pain. But every time I went on Google to, to look for ways to kill myself, I would think about my mother and I love my mom and I didn't want to do that to her. So it would stop me. So I had to figure out what. That's a good thing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is definitely grateful for that. Uh, so I had to figure out what I was going to do because I wasn't going to end my life. And I was in this. Well, I'm not going to kill myself. Now what do I do? Now what do I do? Yeah. I said I was in this hole. So enter what you see behind me. If you're watching this books, enter books. Honestly, I started reading books for the first time in my life. Wow. Uh, Wayne Dyer, Bob Proctor, eventually Grant Cardone. And it just opened up a whole new world to me that I never knew existed. And I started to realize that, oh, I'm in the dirt, not because I was buried. I'm not here because I'm being buried. I'm in the dirt because I've been planted. It's now time for me to freaking bloom into this world. And I used this rock bottom, that rock bottom I was in to, as a springboard to launch into something great. And that's where I started my health journey. I took full responsibility for the first time in my life. Fast forward nine months from that moment, I went from 250, 250 pounds to 170 pounds. I went from 34% body fat to 6% body fat, size 38 waist to size 30. But more important than any of that, I tell people that I carved out a mental six pack, which is more important than a physical six pack any day of the week. And that's what started me into the health space. Oh, that's so amazing, bro. That's amazing. I'm proud of you for sure. Because that's Thank not you. something that's easy to do by yourself, uh, first of all. So you, uh, dad wasn't in the picture, just you and mom? He, he was in the picture, but I lived with my mom and I saw my dad just once a week. Okay. And you, uh, you and I talked a little bit prior. You had some difficulties as a kid then when you were younger. You said you were, you were obese as a kid. Tell me a little bit about, about that. Yeah, I did. My, my life growing up was I was that, that fat kid, that obese kid in school who was bullied all the time, called the fat kid, called his nasty names growing up, picked on on school buses. And I had really low self-confidence, low self-esteem, which, which went into my adulthood. I, I took all those experiences with me into my adulthood. And it was a very rough childhood. Also, to pair with that, Matt, I hung out with the wrong crowd. I was doing drugs as a, as a teenager. It was a very un unhealthy lifestyle. I was mentally bankrupt, mentally obese. What do you think got you there, Ben, to um, hang out with the kids, the wrong crowd? You say, uh, yeah, your mom loved you. She was working hard. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, she was feeding you every day. KFC it was, but nevertheless, <laughs> you had a hot meal every day. But uh, So you were, you were pushed into a different direction. What... Um, well, I don't know if it's necessarily pushed. I mean, I don't want to put words into your mouth. So, I mean, what got you to that place? Where do you, why do you think that happened? You know, I, I, it happened for many reasons. I, I'm responsible for it happening. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be cool. I didn't have any highest values. I never determined what's important to me. I never... I never had any goals to achieve. So I was just uh, tiptoeing my way through life which yeah. a lot of people do. I, I, I didn't have any original thoughts. Other people were thinking for me. I wasn't educating myself with books. 
if I would have started reading those books in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth, my life would be completely different. But yeah. I, it, it's all part of the journey. Nothing was was in the way, but on the way. But I think the moral of the story, at least for me and my story, is I never took the time to write down what was important to me. What are my highest values? And then match that to my, my daily actions. Because I would have not wrote my highest values as smoking weed or <laughs> hanging out with this pe- group of people or whatever it was, drinking alcohol. I would have wrote down, hey, I want to be this or I want to do that. And then I would set up my day to match those actions. So that's the biggest thing. If somebody who's young listening to this right now or if you have kids, if you could have them determine what, what's important to them and then work on accomplishing that, it's not about the goal being accomplished. Like me, I'm on a mission to educate 1 billion people, which you said I, I should, it should be 2 billion. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not about the number. It's about who I have to become in order to achieve that goal. The, the people I have to meet, people I have to help, things I have to do. So it's about, uh, my favorite quote is from Earl Nightingale. It's a, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So an, an ideal is an ideal that you fall in love with. So that's your highest values. Fall in love with your highest values and you are successful every day you are pursuing those highest values. So if I would have done that, it would have been a completely different life for me. Yeah. Uh, I guess and one of the things I'm thinking about is that, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you're, uh, you're not 12 or 14 or 15 years old sitting here talking to me. So as a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kid, because some of, hey, some kids are going to be listening to this program and uh, some folks are going to be parents of kids this age. Uh, what would be some motivators? Because uh, I've got a 12 year old son. So I can understand some of the things that motivate him and some of the things that don't motivate him. And, you know, sitting down and reading about four or five books and, and uh, dropping his diet to go on a to a keto plan doesn't exactly sound like fun to him, right? So, I mean, uh, what are some things that you could go back, not even go back? So, Ben today can talk to Ben at 14. What do you right now tell yourself at 14? How How can you not just tell you at 14, but how can you get through to the Ben at 14? Yeah. Great question. I would tell Ben at 14, I would ask Ben at 14, what's important to you? You know, what do you enjoy doing? What do you, what, what is your superpower? What do other people say you're really good at doing this and you love doing it? And then I'll get that answer. And then I'll say, you know, if you just spent an hour or two every day studying that craft, when you're 24 years old, 10 years from now, you're going to be the best, one of the best people world-class at that thing. And you're going to be paid really good to do it. You're going to be loving your life. You're going to be loving your relationship. So just that small discipline of an hour or two every day studying that, whatever you're, you're, you love doing, 10 years from now, you're going to be world-class at that. And that's what I would tell him. All right, but I don't want to do that. I just want to play my games. I don't, I don't care about that. I, don't want, I, don't, I hate homework. <laughs> yeah, this is a parenting lesson, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you know, that's only because I think that Ben doesn't know his what's important to him. He 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 hasn't it hasn't been revealed to him what his superpower is yet. Ah, I think that's what it is. So once he find out he finds out his superpower, then he could proactively work with that. Um, and if the superpower is, is being world class at a video game and making money, that could be it too. Right. Uh, but you, times you, are different. Kids are making <laughs> millions of dollars playing. Totally, Fortnite. totally. That's so you got to just find a, find that superpower, and that's the way I would word it. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, how could you incorporate something like that into your life now with uh, with health and all that kind of stuff? The superpower, I, I consider you to be a superhero because you are actually bringing some some major uh, transformation to the lives of people around the world now. That's a superhero. You are helping people to go from where they could be dead to to life. That's a superhero. Uh, that's pretty powerful. So, you know, how can you? Um, I mean, obviously, we can co- talk a, here a little bit at the end of the show how they can reach you and how they can, you know, hire you and do all this kind of stuff. But uh, in the meantime, you know, what are some ways that uh, that you can empower some people uh, to to become heroes themselves? Heroes to themselves, right? You got to be a hero to yourself first. 
Yeah, um, it goes back to the highest values. You got to determine what's your highest values. And if you fill up your day, if, if you don't determine your highest values, your day is going to be full of things that are your lowest priority. And then you're going to find yourself frustrated. So something that's been the biggest game changer for me is writing down what's important to me and also writing down who's in my life supporting what's important to me. And if those people, if there's somebody who does not make the list, then I spend less time with them. And I got to tell you, Matt, and I'm sure you've done this yourself. I, I would imagine you've done something similar to yourself and you've done, and you cut a lot of people out of your life. It's a short list, man. What people, there's, there's a short list for me. There's a short list of people who actually truly support me. who are on the same frequency and, and support this vision to help the world. And you could look at that as being unfortunate or you could look at that as being, wow, I'm so grateful to even have this, these people in my life. So I would determine what's important to me and I would continuously take actions based off of my highest values and start delegating the stuff or getting rid of the stuff that's not my highest values. That's not my strength. Uh, there's a lot, and I could, I could get better and better at that myself and I am, but not doing things that you're not good at. <laughs> Don't get better at your weaknesses. Just strengthen your strengths. That's the way I would do it. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's good. That's why you do what you do. So you have, uh, you've been doing this for yourself. You, you kind of went and, uh, and found some ways to, to make yourself better in lots of different ways with that as far as mental health, mindset. Uh, of course, it starts with mindset. You had to make a, a decision to start this first, right? Um, and then you kind of moved into this world where you're now a coach and, and, uh, and coaching folks to do these things, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, before we get to that point, though, uh, one area I want to kind of get to because the name of the show is obviously Hope Revealed, and you shared a few things there. Um, but, you know, what would be uh, for you that, that, that light switch that happened um, when, you were, um, when you were obese, when you were going through the issues you had? This is uh, out of school now, and you were just, uh, I mean, not, but, you know, less than 10, how many years ago it's been? Uh, yeah, it's been 11, about 10, 11 years ago. 10 or 11 years ago. So you made a switch. So, you know, what was that, what was that aha moment, that light switch, that what was that hope revealed to you that said, you can do this? For, I, I had to hit rock bottom to wake up. So for me, my hope revealed was the fact that I was so low in such a dark place and I got out of that. And if I could get out of that, if I could get out of that space of I almost killed myself to living a life where I'm lit up every single day, inspired, um, living on purpose with my purpose, that should give anybody hope. So for me, it was hitting rock bottom and you don't have to hit rock bottom to get that. For me, I had to. And the, what opened up my world was the books. The books gave me hope. So read books from the greats. Uh, I would definitely recommend Wayne Dyer and Bob Proctor, Jim Rohn, and um, just amazing, amazing people out there. Whatever resonates with you, the book cover, the title, start reading it. Start listening to the audio book. Read Matt's book. <laughs> I mean, get inspired <laughs> by people who are legends in the world. So that's what I would, I would recommend. That, that's, that's what gave good. me hope. Yeah, and that just pointed you in the right direction then, huh? It did. It was my it was my GPS guide. It was my compass. Because whenever even though there's rain, there's always a rainbow. Even though there's darkness, there's always stars. So you gotta make sure you see the bright side of things because there's always a, a two sides of every coin. You're like dancing. See the bright side <laughs> of life. So you you jumped into the keto world then. You started doing this thing and then you decided I wanna I wanna be a coach. How did that happen? Yeah, I jumped into the keto thing um, and I decided to, well, first I was an owner at a CrossFit gym here in Miami and then I was not, it wasn't fulfilling my highest values. So I decided to leave and do everything online, which is similar to what you're doing. We're, we're, we're creators. Right. I became a coach because it's important for me to coach people. It's, I get coaching myself. I have several coaches in my life and people need a coach. Uh, because a coach not only has the information, the experience, and the knowledge that the person may not have, but also accountability. Accountability is huge. Uh, it's the glue that ties your goals to your results, that accountability. So yeah. I love coaching. Uh, I consider myself an educator. You are too, Matt. We educate different fields, but we educate. We're educators. We're coaches. 
Uh, and I love it. I, I'm lit up by it. I'm inspired by it, whether I'm coaching one-on-one, -on -one, I'm co whether I'm coaching in my books or on my YouTube videos or on my podcast. I, I just love doing it. That's why I do it. Yeah, no doubt. Me too. It's a, it's a blast to be able to see the light turn on for somebody. It's a, it's a bonus. It's a big, exactly. big bonus. It is. And for you, um, you know, the benefit there is, uh, is tool twofold when you're doing, um, um, well, your holistic care is really what you are. Cause you're, you're not just telling somebody how to have a, a better health plan. Um, you're helping people, uh, mind, body, and soul. Uh, cause it's, you know, you can't just go change your diet. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, if that was, if that was the way it would work, nobody'd be fat. <laughs> I mean, it would be, we'd all be perfect. Right. Um, uh, but we're not, and there's a lot of reasons why, and, uh, you'll be able to do some of those things. So that's fantastic. So what do you see yourself doing five more years from now? I know you said, uh, you know, you like to read, you like to press, you know, press into things. I, I don't necessarily say you're going to be turning away from keto, you know, five years from now, but is there uh, something else in your life besides keto that catches your interest as well? Well, and, and I love health in general and keto is just one of those tools in the toolbox. And I see myself, uh, I want to do more speaking. I love doing speaking gigs. So that, that's one of my highest values. I've determined that. So I want to be traveling more, doing more speaking different uh, countries, different cities, uh, getting paid to do it as well, getting paid the, what I feel I deserve to do it as well. $7 so that's where I see myself doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I want to travel and speak, dude. That's, that's what I want to do. Oh, that's phenomenal. So you like, uh, well, you study a lot and you read a lot. Uh, you did say, have been saying one word a lot in this uh, podcast today, which is values. And you say highest value. And it sounds like that's been part of your vocabulary for, for many years. Um, I guess that can come from some of your reading and things you've gotten in the past. Has there been someone or a, a certain um, inspiration that's gotten you to the place where, where values are important to you, the highest value you're talking about? Yeah, good question. It, it has been. It's been uh, Dr. John D. Martini, uh, who has the book, The Values Factor. Uh, great book, which helps you determine your values. And I did that. I did the exercises and that's how I really determined it. Give me a, give me a brief synopsis of that. What's, what's, what's that mean to you? It's just, what's important to you, your, 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 uh, your purpose on earth, which is unique to you. So it helps you determine what is your purpose on earth? And then how do you live on purpose with that purpose? A lot of people are, they think that they're doing what they are meant to do, but if, you, if you're complaining or if you're unhappy, that's a red flag that you're not living to your highest values. When you're living to your highest values, from my experience, there is happiness, there is balance to everything. And you mentioned balance a few times. You understand that, that um, you're, you're living on purpose with your purpose. So that's the way I would define it. Living on purpose with your purpose. Some people call it Dharma. Some people just call it happiness. Some people just call it your calling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's your highest values. And if you could determine what they are and have your actions match them, you're going to find yourself on cloud nine. You're going to find yourself living an inspired life. You're going to hop out of bed and be looking and, and be excited for whatever you have to do your, your task. That's how I feel. I wake up most days and I'm lit up. I'm excited. What am I going to learn? What am I, I going to share? I wake up most days too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's Otherwise true. you wouldn't be here with me right, right now. <laughs> so tell me what, what are some of those? Um, I mean, you, you've got values pretty, pretty knocked out pretty good in your life. So what are some of their top values in, in, uh, in Ben's life? It's definitely education, both educating myself and then sharing that education. It's uh, content creation. I love creating content video, audio, similar to you. Right. Uh, it's my family, my, my girlfriend, my dog who's laying here. Uh, it's my quality friends. It's um, making an impact in this world. So those are some of my highest values. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. So that's pretty cool, bro. So tell me about uh, your, your one day wife to be. Um, is, is she on the same page with you? Or, I mean, uh, well, my wife and I, we're like completely polar opposite, but, uh, at the same time, we're very much alike. We're like an iron that sharpens iron. Sometimes we're rubbing each other raw. It's just going to be rough sometimes, but 
what's that like for you? You guys have uh, similar, similar desires, similar things. What's she do? What's her thing? Yeah, we are not that similar. Um, she's not into the health like I am. Uh, she does do a variation of keto and fasting, intermittent fasting. I've taught her a lot, but she, uh, she works here in Miami for uh, a, 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 a corporation. So she does that, uh, but that's not one of her long-term goals. She definitely wants to do more of the entrepreneurship. Her, she values fashion. She loves fashion. She loves um, also content creation. She's very creative and funny. She's also a designer and um, an email marketer. So she values fashion for sure. She has a fashion blog and an Instagram uh, um, page that's dedicated I was to say fashion. She's got to be an IG girl, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So she has a, and if you're, if you're listening to this and you're into fashion, go follow her. It's a feisty fembot on uh, Instagram, Feisty Fembot. How do you spell that? <laughs> F-E-F-E-I-S-T-Y uh, and then F-E-M-B-O-T. Fembot. Fembot. Like That's female right. bot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Good question. But she's kind of funny. So she's probably got a Brazilian jokes to tell you then too, right? Yeah, I'm learning all the curse words in, in Portuguese. <laughs> oh man, it's pretty good. <laughs> That's, or maybe not so good. I don't know about that. <laughs> So uh, her family, they're all still over there? Are they in stateside? Or? Her mom and dad are here, but her entire extended family are in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, wow. So does she go home quite often or not she does. so much? She goes there about once a year. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. So five more years from now, you're going to be speaking across the world, making $7 million for every keynote speech that you do. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Wow. He's going to be traveling, looking fantastic, telling jokes. Yep. And you may have children. Yep, exactly. That sounds about accurate. Man, I love it. It's the best thing. <laughs> you any nailed it. Book, do you have any more books coming out of you anytime soon? Yeah, I do. I have a lot of, th- like you said, you have like 15 books that you have oh uh, content. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I have 15, but I do have a lot of things I, of content I've written. I've just got to, uh, what's actually been calling me lately is, uh, writing a book about diabetes, about how to use keto the right way for diabetes. So that might be my next book. Uh, or I yeah, don't that'd know. Be fantastic. I know a lot of folks with diabetes. Yeah. And uh, I, the word keto, the, to me, I, I knew keto because of ketones. Mm-hmm. And uh, when that gets out of whack for somebody with diabetes, not a good thing. Um, so yeah. I, I learned that through that. So that's a powerful thing to be able to te- to write a book of that nature. Uh, would be fantastic for sure. Yeah, so that might be the next one. We'll see. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. Man, it's awesome, bro. So um, I guess if you had a chance to sit here and talk to somebody who uh, may have been going through what you were as a kid who was being bullied for being uh, different, right? Um, Or maybe um, someone who didn't have the drive uh, because it came to you later in life. Uh, and there's different circumstances and certain situations that kind of got you that place, uh, that hope reveal we were talking about in your life. So, so Ben, for those folks that might be listening right now or watching us today, and you could speak to that, um, what would something, what would you be able to say to that person right now? I would say that there is no circumstance on the outside of you that's ever going to help you or hurt you, hurt you. It's what's on the inside that counts. And your thoughts are the most powerful creation in this world. Thoughts are things. You have the ability to choose positive or negative thoughts. And if you could be so convicted and have the self-awareness with your thoughts, that's key. If you could have self-awareness with what you're thinking, you're going to be ahead of the game. Because nothing, because everything actually, everything you want to accomplish on the outside all starts on the inside. So if you could master the awareness of when you're having negative thoughts versus where you're having positive thoughts. And just, you're not going to stop thinking negative thoughts. You're not going to have fearful thoughts, but if you could close the gap and not let it paralyze you and have the ability to choose a better thought that's going to serve you in your future, that's where you start winning. And that's what started happening with me because self-limiting beliefs and negative thoughts and, and things that pop in your head have nothing to do with who you are or your potential in this world. It has everything to do with your conditioning, your past experiences, your paradigm. So if you understand that, then you understand that when a thought goes through your mind that's negative, that's not serving you, have shorten that gap with letting it take space, take rent in your mind, and just choose a better thought. 
it's like a muscle, continuously choose a better thought. I look at them as clouds passing through my head. And it happens to me all the time. I get negative thoughts and I just say, nope, let it pass. And I choose a better thought. And if you could get into that <laughs> ability, you're going to just get the life that you want to get. Oh, that's so good. There's a scripture that says, cast down every vain imagination that exalts itself. So there's a lot of times there's thoughts that we have and there's times you just have to cast them down. You continue to cast them down, right? It's just, it's a, it's a discipline that we have to put into our life. It's basically exactly what you're talking about. Discipline equals free- it says discipline equals freedom. So you nailed it. There you go. <laughs> I was kind of segueing into that shirt. <laughs> Speaking of which, how can folks get a hold of you and, uh, and maybe some of the st- cool shirts like that or whatever you might have available or the books or things like that? How can folks get a hold of you, Ben? Well, the best thing, uh, I just released a new program, which I'm really excited about, and it's a holistic approach. So we talked about how there's so much confusion in the health space and Dr. Google and who do you trust. Yeah. I put together an online platform called the Keto Camp Academy, which is all the information curated for you in a, and it's categorized so you can learn about keto. If you're a beginner in keto, there's a section for you. If you're advanced in keto, there's a section for you for fasting as well, but not just that sleep, performance, longevity, fitness. There's a section called Mental Six Pack, which is all just inspirational videos. You also get all of my books, meal plans, nutritional cheat sheets, uh, all of my PDFs, which are over uh, $500 worth for free as part of the membership. And you get a group coaching call in the private Facebook group with myself. And you get all that for $39 per month, okay? <laughs> and 39 it's like, bucks a month? Dude, that's it. That's crazy. I know. I know. It's crazy. So, and you could cancel any time. So that would be the best place to get my information. So go to, well, you're, I'm actually going to give you an affiliate link. So he'll, Matt will put the affiliate link in wherever the subscription is. He'll give you the link to sign up for that. Also, I have my Keto Camp podcast, which is a podcast. I release three brand new episodes every single week. So go subscribe to that. And my three Keto Camp- episodes a week? Yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bye, Vinny. <laughs> and my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash keto camp, where I release five brand new videos each week. So those are two free resources for you. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> People think I was busy. Good Lord. No wonder so, you're, you're so white. <laughs> non stop. I love it, dude. I know you do too. I try. I try. So the, the website was uh, after you chug that water, was Ben what? It was youtube.com slash keto camp for the, for the uh, YouTube channel. And then just keto camp podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. It's oh, that's fantastic. Of course, we'll have all that information here on the show. And as you were saying it, it'll be scrolling because that will be edited by that point. So it'll be, oh, cool. that'll be neat. It's like magic. <laughs> ben, thanks so much for being with us today and for sharing some of your insights and giving us some wisdom about some of those things from back as a kid through those tough times you had in life. Uh, mom doing the whole KFC runs and then uh, you being able to uh, some of it was good. Some of it was not so good. And then to be able to experience some of the things you did and some of the breakthrough in your life, uh, which is uh, a blessing uh, not only just for you, but uh, good Lord for the thousands of people and more uh, that will be affected over a period of time by the choice you made, which means if people will listen to what you're saying and make a choice in their life, it's it, it's a gift that just keeps on giving, right? It's like you, it's a, you can't out give, right? You got to keep on giving, but you can never, I always say you can't out give God, but it's such a blessing to be able to do those types of things in people's lives because you said yes to something. And when you said yes to that, now you have the opportunity to share something with folks that they can see and experience for themselves. You're, you're living proof, right? And uh, I want to say thank you for what you've done and what you've been doing in your life and for what you're able to share with folks and the passion you share every day here on LinkedIn. Let's, if those are folks are watching us here on LinkedIn today, of course it could be on YouTube, wherever the case may be, but um, we're both pretty strong on, on LinkedIn as well. There's a great, great family of folks there on LinkedIn, um, but uh, they can follow you in lots, lots of different places. You're on Facebook as well. Yeah. Uh, things on Facebook too. Um, so there's just so many lives that have been changed as a result of Ben being on this planet. And I, I want to say thank you for doing that, Ben. Yeah, Matt, thank you. I, I received that that uh, with open arms and I love what you're doing too, man. You've got an amazing attitude and an incredible story. You show up even when you don't feel like it like today. And I'm, I'm just glad to be associated with somebody like you. You've got great energy. You're doing great work. You're helping many people as well. 
and you're great at what you do. The world needs more people like you who are creating content that changes the world, not just content that's gossip and, and scarcity minded. You are an abundance thinker and I'm grateful to call you a friend. And uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share on your podcast, brother. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again. And folks, hey, don't forget, Ben just uh, showed all us that through his life, what he had. And that's the whole reason that we're here on this show today is that there may be a dark moment, maybe some situations in your life where you feel like life just isn't worth living. But at the end of the day, it is, right? Even it comes to the point where you're thinking like, I don't know if I can kill myself. I can't come up with enough stuff for you to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and live, right? Which is one reason why Ben stayed alive. I'm so grateful that he did. Um, but folks, you can too. I know that it feels like there's times you just want to call it quits and just give up. I know. Good Lord, I probably would have done that last night. But uh, you don't have to. There is a hope revealed, and that's the proof that he just showed you. You can do this. It's totally possible. So don't ever forget, darkness might be there, but there's always going to be a hope revealed. 